If you've been with me for the past five years, since the very early days of my YouTube channel, think of today's video as an extension or a part two to my letter to myself video from five years ago. I was 16 at the time, I'm now 21, which you can tell by the title of this video, 21 lessons I learned at 21. And if you do the math, I am 31% older than I was at 16, and I'm hoping that I'm also 31% wiser than I used to be. I've been sharing a lot of my thoughts and the lessons that I learn throughout my years of vlogging on YouTube, but I wanted to compile everything into one video um, so that I can look back on this in two years, five years, ten years, twenty years, and also so that you guys can have a video to come back to whenever you need a little bit of push, a little bit of comfort, a little bit of motivation. I don't want to ramble, let's just get into it. Here's the 21 lessons that I learned at 21. Number one, do not get cream coffee as your birthday Starbucks if you're lactose intolerant. Or take a lactate, carry lactate at all times. Not all lessons are this silly. Not sure if that's a yay or an a. Number two, don't wait around to try something you want to try. Maybe do wait when it's trying new cream coffee on your birthday, but other than that, I'm not letting my cute blouse rot in my closet because I'm saving it for the perfect occasion. No never minds because I'm scared people will understand me. There's no perfect time to do certain things. If no one wants to do it with you, do it by yourself. Because it's for yourself anyways, right? You can't miss out on something you like because no one wants to do it with you. Also, this is the only way to be a fashion girly, I realize, because the more you wait and play it safe, the more on time you'll be for trends, and on time is late. Number three, you'll never run out of things to do alone. I started doing a lot of things alone the second I got my driver's license. I specifically remember this one holiday season going Christmas shopping to the mall alone for the very first time and feeling all grown up. And I really went from needing my airpods to do anything alone to eating at an omakase by myself at a new city. I enjoy myself as company, truly. This was all fun until COVID hit. The lack of socialization made me feel like I was living on this earth alone, while in a different universe, others still had their close friends to play with. But what can I do about a pandemic? I drove myself to the lake for the fourth time that week, parked my car, watched the sunset to Frank Ocean, and that was when I spotted a girl sitting on top of her trunk eating sushi alone alone together maybe she was sad too that she was alone maybe she was delighted to be alone but her silent company made me feel so much peace and also made me realize that i'll never run out of things to do alone plot twist a friend came and joined her a couple minutes after but let's just ignore that part. Number four, how you feel isn't exactly how it is. Don't let how you feel destroy what you actually are. You're bigger than your negative feelings. An example of this can be overeating, feeling bloated, and freaking out that I'll put on 10 pounds overnight. Because that's how it feels. Scientifically though, you cannot gain 10 pounds overnight. I usually take myself on a nature walk, sweat a little bit, feel refreshed, and then I'm back to feeling strong and healthy. It's kind of crazy how different I can feel all in the span of two hours. Another example is just feeling that I'm not creative, that I'm not working enough, that I'm not doing enough, and thinking, am I bad at my job? Which is the one thing that I'm supposed to be good at. It's natural to go through burnouts. Take a break, change up your environment, keep pushing through. Don't throw away your whole system. My system that keeps my productivity and creativity going is Notion. You guys already know that I've been a big user and a big fan of Notion for the past like two years now. But Notion is this new feature that's been helping with a lot of my creativity blocks and also eliminating a lot of my am I horrible at what I do feels. So through these burnouts, instead of breaking down or doubting my system, I've been running back to Notion even more with confidence and asking Notion AI, which is a new feature for more assurance and assistance. I've been thinking of Notion AI as like my productivity and creativity assistant. A lot of my work anxieties come from one, that I'm not doing enough and that I won't finish everything in time. And two, just running out of creative thoughts overall. To help with my anxiety number one, I've been using Notion AI guys summary feature which summarizes big paragraphs of like personal notes or emails or whatever I need to break down quickly and when I have a long work email or even like school email or any long text that I can get lost in easily I can ask Notion to pick out concise action items so that I have a short to-do list and I won't have to stress out about the long paragraphs
And Notion AI also has a Write For Me feature that writes in different tones and different forms or structure. So if you need to be writing a blog, if you need to write an article, if you need to write um, an email, it knows what to do and it will help you write those out. Number two, with my creative ideas running out, I can also ask Notion AI to brainstorm ideas for me. So if I need to post an Instagram for an eyewear brand and I don't know what to caption the post, I can ask Notion to help me write a caption for Instagram that will catch people's eyes and that will match trending keywords. It will just suggest a list of captions for me and even hashtags and you can even select it and ask Notion to change the tone so it can be professional, casual, friendly. The Notion platform itself is completely free but for you to try out this new Notion AI feature, it is $10 a month. I personally think it's totally worth a try. Think of it as two cups of coffee that you are giving up for a personal assistant for a month. You can check out the link in my description box and that is it for this little ad break. Number five. If I let you in my circle, you a winner. Don't force yourself to like someone. Just because you're not comfortable with that person doesn't make you a bad person. And it doesn't make the other person bad either. Some people simply don't get along and it's not a bad thing. But always surround yourself with good people. Remember that it only takes one apple to make the whole tree go bad. Number six, I can't play the victim hoping someone will notice and save me. I am the only one who knows fully what's going on. Even when I don't know what's actually going on, I'm the only one that will face the consequences of however way I go about a problem. Number seven, your problem right now is more important than your past problems. Don't minimize your current problem. Looking back on the past and lingering on the past can get addicting, especially when social media makes it so easy for us to record what we're doing, seeing, eating, and listening to every minute of the day. But nothing hurts more than an open wound. Don't disregard your open wound just because you've had a broken bone before. Number eight, you learn best by imitating. My biggest admiration goes out to those who are dedicated, lifelong learners. They never settle for the skills and talent they have. They're always open to try something new. They're not ashamed to be beginners, to make mistakes, to ask questions that might sound too dumb. They're not ashamed to take baby steps and to spend hours with end products being mid or even quite horrible. Through these people, I've recognized that you learn best when you're in an environment where making mistakes is possible. When you're able to take baby steps imitating what you want to learn until you're able to go on your own and create your own ways. This is how I learned to edit. I watched, saved, replayed countless YouTube videos, imitated the styles that appealed to my senses. I uploaded countless bad videos and videos with mistakes, typos. People often tell me now that I have my own distinct style on YouTube, but I'm still learning, researching, practicing because I never want to give up learning and thank you to those who spend enough time to recognize my style and my dedication number nine how you spend your day is how you'll spend your life this changed the way i spend my days if i get too comfortable pushing away the things i need to do and the things i want to do i'm a little scared that i'll end up letting my life go by having pushed away the opportunities i had to grow and to enjoy life number 10 do hard things without getting recognition for it not gonna lie, it's always nice to get rewarded for whatever you do, but it's so freeing to get in the habit of completing a task confidently out of my own desires. Someone recognized my hard work? Cool. Nobody recognized my hard work? Also cool. It does not make a difference to me. Number 11. Never let the inner child in you mature. When I was 16, I used to sit myself down and come up with a list of things that I need to start doing and stop doing to appear less young and more mature. Moving to California and being exposed to the creative industry in LA, I realized that my superpower in the industry is how young I am. I want to protect my young energy forever. Not for career reasons, this was not supposed to be about work. It was more of like, find people that makes you feel so comfortable and that brings out the silly, childlike side in you but both ways work I guess. Number 12, I love Los Angeles. It's crazy to think that I was seriously considering to move out of California a year ago, but I got a car, started exploring more of the city. I adore the diversity, the palm trees, the street style, the hikes, the unhinged conversations I hear at cafes. This city is opening up so many new doors for me and helping me dream bigger than ever before, and I'm truly grateful. Number 13, when you're losing faith in humanity, go to a concert. Watching people cheer, sing, and dance with their favorite artists never fails to make me smile. 
And nothing makes my eyes sparkle more than watching so many other people's eyes sparkle all at once. We're all just human at the end of the day. Number 14. No such thing as time wasted. They're all invested back into you. Let's look at an hourglass. Are you focusing more on the fact that you're losing the sand? What we're forgetting to look is a stacked sand at the bottom. The top sand means nothing, it holds empty value. What's valuable is a bottom sand that's experienced. The memories, the mistakes, the naps, the violently hungover mornings, they all hold some kind of value to us. Number 15. Not all relationships end because you hate each other. Sometimes you have to let go for unavoidable conditions. If you watched 2521, you'll know exactly what I mean. If you haven't watched, let this be a reminder to go watch the drama. Number 16. Social media is the last thing I want to be troubled by in a relationship because social media is not real. Sometimes, I wonder what it would be like to experience love in the 80s or maybe even 90s. What's it like to not fight about what someone is and not posting on Instagram and who they're following and not following on Instagram? Number 17. Buying yourself an experience will always be worth it. If I have the money to wonder what I need to buy to impress people, I'm now going to turn that around and wonder where I can travel to, what new live events I can attend, and what new cuisines I can taste. Because my experiences build taste and personality, and taste and personality never go out of style. Number 18. You lose more by not trying and playing safe. Would you rather try, fail, and learn something about yourself? Or would you rather never try and never know? Oh, and there is a chance of you succeeding. We can't just expect the failure. There might be a good 50-50 split on this. Personally, I've learned that I'd rather try even if there's a chance of failure because Number 19. Failing is not a sign of weakness or defeat. It's a sign of courage. It's part of the process of reaching success. Number 20. Be mindful of how you use the word sorry. In a lot of scenarios that you might be trained to say sorry, you actually don't need to be sorry. Never apologize for who you are and taking up space. Number 21. Don't sacrifice time with precious people for the sake of content. This one's a very personal lesson, but we live in a world now where everyone's lives can serve as entertainment to each other and also where our lives can be monetized and be a career. I love recording my life and sharing. I absolutely love, don't get me wrong but my heart holds more respect and love for the people in my life and they deserve my undivided attention without my urges to record and make content for the sake of my career kicking in and they also deserve to know things that's going on in my life before they watch my videos personal communication from me and i really want to start valuing that more i hope you guys enjoyed this video i want this video to mark the end and the beginning of an era on my youtube channel with my last fact being, I don't want to sacrifice precious times with the people that I love. I want to space out the terms that I post my vlogs, and I've already been doing that, a lot of you have noticed. But I wanted to also give you guys an answer to why I was doing that. I found myself constantly thinking what I can turn my real life events and fun moments into content and into my career and I realized it was a pretty toxic pattern for me and it was also stressing me out because I am in the process of starting multiple business ventures that I really want to experiment with and I really want to spend a lot of my time in. I don't know, I'm rambling again. I want to promise you guys at least one vlog a month to share some of the fun events and some of the favorites that are going on in my life at the moment and I also want to promise two fashion videos a month that I'm proud of. I'm thinking of other ways that I can still stay intimate and close with you guys. That makes sense at the point of my life that I'm in right now and also that makes sense with the amount of time I have for content creating. Thank you guys for always being so patient with me and for being by my side and I will see you in my next video.